IBM had a study reveals how AI is changing work. And it is interesting that they're in on it themselves, not just doing studies, they're taking right. actions uh, as well. It is funny. Yeah. Like if you kind of go back and recall that in May, IBM CEO said that they were going to stop hiring for some jobs that would be replaced by AI. I think they said it was about 30% of like 26,000 non-customer facing positions yeah. that would be replaced by AI, AI over a five-year period. So that's like 7,800 jobs. But then they did a study. So they looked at 3,000 global C-suite executives across 20 industries, 28 countries from last December and January. Then they came back in May and did kind of like a pulse um, survey just to kind of see where things are, if they've changed much. They looked at how companies are investing in enterprise transformation, kind of what business value is being generated um, related to boost productivity, effectiveness, effectiveness, all of that. And then they also pulled workers in 22 yeah. countries. And they talked about work arrangements, career mobility, employee experience, all of this. So I think, you know, not surprising, 87% of executives believe employees are more likely to be augmented, augmented than replaced by generative AI, which I think that's interesting being that IBM kind of came out and said they're gonna replace a lot of them, but so 87% yeah. augmented and executives estimated that 40% that's a high percentage. 40% of their workforce will need to be reskilled over the next three years. So, and this is really a kind of across all employee groups. So workers at all levels are gonna feel the effects of generative AI. Entry level employees are gonna see kind of the most of the shift. So 77% of executives said that entry level positions already see the effects of generative AI. So that actually, we'll talk about that with Microsoft and kind of what they're doing on with frontline workers with AI. Um, but this is just gonna intensify over the next few years. Um, only 22% of respondents said the same for executive or senior management roles. So big difference, 77% versus 22%. So, you know, as I think AI is gonna start replacing kind of more of these, you know, um, repetitive menial tasks, then AI is starting to change the way people look at work. So what they found was the study is showing that people are, they're more interested in doing the meaningful work and less interested in the flexibility of work. So- Wait, say that one more time. They're more interested in what, in doing meaningful work than they are in having flexible work. Okay. So. You know, I think if we look at the last couple of years, everybody has said the number one thing people care about is flexibility in work. It's all been about hybrid work and I'm not knocking hybrid work. I'm not saying anybody should be doing a, you know, a, a particular thing one way or the other. But when, when employees were asked, they said they care more about doing meaningful work than about flexibility and growth opportunity. This was a big disconnect with what the executives said. They said that they thought the meaningful work was the least impactful. They thought flexible work and compensation and job security were the most important. So I think that there's like a disconnect here caused a little bit by sort of the, um, maybe it's like sort of the question of like the unknowns of what is going to happen related to AI. Yeah. But then I think there's sort of this lingering post pandemic belief that that executives still have that their employees value remote work or hybrid work or this flexibility more than over everything else. And I think we're going to start to see a shift back to like, maybe it's, that's not the most valued thing. And if AI is going to replace people at work, are people going to feel the need to show up a little more? And is that more meaningful work going to be more collaborative things that people want to show up for, want to be more in person? You know, I mean, I think it's going to really change the way we work. Yeah. Um, I like to look at uh, two examples historically. You know me, I like to go back to history because I'm old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, history doesn't lie. Yeah, it's not the, the only predictor of the future, but it's right? a pretty darn good one. 
1985, all the creatives were freaking out because desktop publishing programs came out uh, for the Mac. And everybody freaked out. You know, all the creatives were going to lose all their jobs because remember, right, for advertising campaigns, we would literally cut out pictures, uh, apply shapes, and then take a real photograph of that, right? And that's how we would develop a uh, copy. Yeah. Uh, and and put even advertising together that might even be used on TV or in the grocery store. And then here we are, um, you know, 35 years later, and we've democratized creativity. You did a great write up on things like Adobe Firefly. Um, and uh, creatives aren't out of work. There's still right. a lot of work uh, for these folks. Yeah, uh, their throughput is just going up. And mm -hmm. there are some stuff that the machines won't be able to do. Right. I mean, heck, uh, I go into stable diffusion or something like that and type in something about a person and their hands are all wonky <laughs> and their faces are weird. Right. <laughs> um, and I'm thinking that is not going to put anybody out of business. Right. And then when we move from machine code to COBOL and Fortran and Pascal, it was going to be the death of the programmer. And here we are in 2023. We can't get enough programmers, even though we have integrated uh, development environments, you know, IDEs, and all of this magic, um, high order uh, code, mm -hmm. there will be people who will lose their jobs. Right? Because I do think this, the the uh, areas of web 1.0 and web 2.0, that didn't uh, clear those out like travel agencies, stockbrokers, retail got reduced. Um, Media got impacted with uh, things like Blockbuster and the way that that all media was distributed. Um, uh, classifieds, Craigslist killed classifieds and, you know, Facebook ads. So, you know, there will be jobs lost. I just don't think I do think there will be new jobs that are available. And, right. you know, aside from the lack of reskilling when we we cleared out, hollowed out the Midwest, uh, with um, uh, auto production, steel production, plastics production, and moved it moved it uh, to Asia or the South, uh, I think we're going to be okay. There are jobs that people don't want, that they don't want to show up for. That, right. And I think that this gets back to one of your macro points of uh, give, me, give me some meaning in my work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can do this from, if I have to come into the job, make it meaningful, uh, I want to come in. Right. Until unemployment gets above four or five percent, I think the employees will still be dictating uh, the rules of work. But we also, you know, as a former executive, right, I got to parse between, you know, what's real and what's not. There are some jobs that require collaboration. You have to be in the office for the tools mm -hmm. are not eff as effective as they need to be. Um, heck, there are some people who want to come in the office because yeah. they don't, they want to get away from their house. There are single people who might want to meet somebody at work or meet yeah. some of their friends at work. Yeah. Uh, you're a new employee and not just a, a, a new hire out of college, but a new person into a business. I don't think you have a culture, uh, uh, without a building. Um, right. now you might be like, well, more insights and strategy doesn't have a building, right? And we don't come into the office. We have a mature workforce on the whole. Uh, we've been in our careers. Um, we're typically not looking for our significant other. We're probably not looking for new friends. <laughs> <laughs> we're not good enough friends to the friends we already have. And we travel all the time. And so... we see each other on, you know, like we would make terrible friends. Um, <laughs> so uh, anyways, I, I, I don't have this all figured out for all five generations in the workforce, but uh, it's studies like this that do bring a lot of value to this conversation. I stick to this, Mel, and I said this three years ago, the current collaboration tools are not good enough. They need to get better. Uh, and I think it's a, a major opportunity uh, for uh, tech vendors to, mm -hmm. to move forward. I think also, you know, what this does say is there the the upskilling and one thing I have been saying is that 
the the school bans on chat gpt and i don't know if you've seen this they've now been repealed all the schools are coming back on this and i've been saying this you know this i've been i've been beating this drum for a while they need to be teaching this in school because and i will this has been said you know our, our friend chinton menta from wells fargo cio and chief yes. innovation officer has said ai won't replace people but the people who use ai better will replace the people who don't so our kids need to be learning this we need to be upskilling people and you know even like i've seen good examples of open text is doing this with google workspace actually teaching people they're using i think tata consultancy to teach people the value the business value of ai so it's not just here are these tools but teaching them how to use it how to best get the value out of it um, IBM did that with um, some oil and gas company I'm not remembering the name of, but actually showing people how to get the best value out of these tools. And so if- I love that statement. In fact, I might steal it from Chayton and not give him any credit and use it use it as my own. No, I'm just <laughs> No, we saw this with PCs. I mean, my, my first job, believe it or not, was in sales. And by the way, I, I was so bad at sales that I got into product management. <laughs> um, but he didn't know how to use a PC. All his emails were printed out and it's like, dude, you should probably learn how to use this or retire because right. this is the way that, that, that this is going. Um, yeah. I, I do try, even though I'm getting up there in age, I really do try to use every tool that Gen Z or even Gen A uh, is looking at, uh, using, if nothing else, uh, uh trying it out. I would probably use, um, it, it's funny, I've bashed short videos, but it's like, here I am, I'm into uh, YouTube Reels and <laughs> Instagram. I just don't like, you know, uh, some of the other platforms that uh, some of the younger folks are on. 